How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Boy Like Hobby Time. A little over a week ago, some footage from Star Wars celebrations surfaced, and everyone thought it was the trailer for Mandalorian Season 3. Just kidding. It actually was the Season 3 trailer, and I think it's going to be a fun season. In the trailer, there were some new Mandos that caught my eye, and today I'm going to try and recreate them. The build obviously required some Mandalorians, and the only two figures I could quickly get a hold of were Mando and Boba Fett, which meant that I needed to remove some identifying marks from their armor in order to more accurately capture the look of these new Mandalorians. After some scraping, sanding, and buffing, I went over all of those spots with some plastic cement to create a more unified surface and hide any seams. I also patched up some holes with some putty and a little sanding. I then stuck all of Mando's armor pieces on a makeshift painting tray made from the box he came in, I set that aside, and I assembled the rest of the figure. This is the 1 to 12 scale Din Djarin figure from Bondi, in case you're wondering, and it is not the shiny Beskar version. I then assembled the other model, which was Boba Fett. Boba has some iconic, massive pockets on his jumpsuit that needed to be removed, so after cutting those away with a cutoff wheel on my Dremel, I patched up the holes with more putty, and I assembled the rest of the figure. After that, I took everything outside to prime, including another makeshift tray full of Boba Fett's armor. I want my armor. I primed the jumpsuits with a matte black, and I primed all of the armor pieces with a metallic silver, which isn't usually a good option for priming, but in this case, it'll come in handy. I painted one of the jumpsuits with warm tones and the other with cool tones. So in other words, brown and blue, which is not exactly what I saw in the trailer, but I thought it would look all right. I tried to pick out the colors of the armor from the trailer, but I only had a head and half a torso of each character to work with, so I did a little bit of guesswork for the rest. I realized I'm a dingus and I should have organized the pieces by color, but I didn't, so I had to go back and repaint most of the pieces multiple times because of overspray. I love the eclectic look of all these new Mandos, but it does get me curious as to who is on whose team. I just imagine if there was an American football game where each side was allowed to wear whatever they wanted. I think it would be confusing for them, it would be confusing for us. But at least it would be a fun new variable. Because of that nice smooth silver layer underneath all the acrylic paint, I was able to remove the paint in places for some very convincing chipping and weathering effects and any accidental scuffs while handling it just added to the look. I'll be sure to seal everything with a matte varnish off camera later to protect the final paint job. I then started the final assembly of the figures, and because the kits are so similar to begin with, I was able to play around with the parts and ended up swapping a few, including the arms, to better suit what I wanted the characters to look like. Once the figures were all put together, it was time to figure out some weapons for them. I did a little bit of kit bashing between Mando's rifle and Boba Fett's blaster to get a custom new one that was a mix between the two, and I threw a little scope on the pistol in the hand of the other Mandalorian. I'm sure these two will look just a little different in the show, but I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. With the figures done, it was time to move on to the base. I used a pre-routed wooden base, I flipped it over and I marked out where the cutout for the battery housing and the location of the switch needed to be. I then drilled some holes and I marked out where I needed to route some channels for the wiring and I took the base outside into the garage and I did some sawing and some routing. I tested the fit to make sure everything would fit and then it was time to add some scenery to the base. I broke out some bits, bags, and boxes to kit bash a little Star Wars-y looking set piece for these Mandos to stand on. I grabbed some suitable stuff and began sticking, breaking, cutting, and gluing. Not all of the plastics wanted to stick to everything else, so I used some flame treatment on the surface to create better adhesion. This is a trick that I picked up from Craftsman of Steady Crafton. For the little platform, I cut up a sprue with a nice flat side on one side, and after I had glued it down, I cut a piece of metal mesh to the same size and I glued that over the sprue. In the trailer, these two characters are just standing there, which wouldn't make for a very compelling diorama. So, one of these figures is going to be propped up in the air like they're just launching with their jetpack, and the other is going to be kneeling, pointing off to one side, like some kind of battle's taking place. That also assumes that they are on the same team. But I could be completely wrong about that. 
After that, I mixed up some modeling compound, it was a nice thick consistency, and I built up the terrain around the structure. After that had a little time to dry, I sprinkled on some pebbles and sand and I glued it in place with watered down glue and isopropyl alcohol. Once the base had dried fully overnight, I drilled a hole for a standoff that would be holding the little jetpack joyrider in the air, and then I took it outside to prime. I didn't go too crazy with the detail on the paint job because I knew it could very easily just become visual clutter. I used the airbrush to add some earthy colors real quickly, did that in sequence from dark to light, and then I threw on some washes. Once all the paint was dry, it was time to install the lights. I fixed the battery housing and the switch into position, and then I pulled the wires through the base. I used two of these little LED filaments, which I soldered together in parallel, and I stuck them to the backpack of the Rocketeer. I then connected the wires from the filaments to the wires connected to the battery, and I moved on to the cloud effects. I realized that the jetpacks in Star Wars don't create this much smoke when they ignite, but in order to hide the standoff and help Mando look a little bit more floaty, I decided it was worth it. I sprayed all of the furthest sections of the cloud with black from the airbrush, and the last thing to do was to paint the sides of the diorama with black 3.0. And after that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.